as we commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ two millennia ago. We offer our testimony of the reality of his miraculous life and the infinite virtue of his great atoning sacrifice. None other has had so profound an influence upon all who have lived and will yet live upon the earth. He was the great Jehovah of the Old Testament. The Messiah of the New. Under the direction of his father, he was the creator of the earth. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Though sinless, he was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. He went about doing good, yet was despised for it. His gospel was a message of peace and goodwill. He treated all to follow his example. He walked the woods of Palestine, having the sick, causing the blind to see, and raising the dead. He taught the truth of eternity, the reality of our freedom, the purpose of life on earth, and the potential for the sons and daughters of God in the life to come. He instituted the sacrament as a reminder of his great and toning sacrifice. He was arrested and condemned on spurious charges. Witted to satisfy the mob, he sent it to die on Calvary cross. He gave his life to atone for the sins of all mankind. His was a great vicarious gift in behalf of all those who would ever live upon the earth. We solemnly testify that his life, which is central to all human history, neither began in Bethlehem nor concluded on Calvary. He was the firstborn of the Father, the only begotten Son in the flesh, the Redeemer of the world. He rose from the grave to become the first fruits of them that slept. As risen Lord, he visited among those he had loved in life. He also ministered among other sheep in ancient America. In, modern day, in the modern world, he and his father appeared to the boy Joseph Smith. Ushering in the long promised dispensation of the fullness of times. Of the living Christ, the prophet Joseph wrote. His eyes were as a flame of fire. The hair of his head was white. White hair, no. His countenance shone above the brightness of the sun. And his voice was as the sound of of the rushing of great waters. Even of the voice of Jehovah saying, I am the first and the last. I am he who liveth. I am he who was slain. I am your advocate with the Father. Of him the prophet also declared. And now after the many testimony which have been given of him, this is the testimony last of all, which we give of him that he lives. For we saw him even on the right hand of God, and we heard the voice by Necker that he's the only begotten Son of the Father. <laughs> that by him and through him and of him the worlds are and were created. And the inhabitants thereof are begotten sons and daughters unto God. We declare in words of solemnity that his priesthood and his church have been restored upon the earth. Built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. We testify that he will someday return to earth. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. He will walk as kings of kings. And reign as lords of lords. And every knee shall bend. And every tongue shall speak and worship before him. Each of us will stand and be judged of him according to our works and the desire of our hearts. A taste of mercy. That Jesus is the loving Christ. The laughter will say of God. He is the great King Emmanuel who stands today on the right hand of his father. He has a life. The life of hope of the world. His way is the path that leads to happiness in this life and the eternal life to in the world to come. God be thanked for the matchless gift of his divine son.
Can you say it louder? Say it with a smile. <laughs> 